Welcome to the new features video for Cubase 11 from Streamworks Audio. Now, my name is Walt. I'm going to take about an hour of your time and walk through the coolest of the new features in version 11. And rather than pick through this thing like plug-in by plug-in and, and tweak by tweak, what I've tried to do is group stuff into logical chunks so that you can uh, visit everything about, say, dynamics in one chapter and frequency editing or uh, spectral editing in another and so forth. Um, so in this first chapter, forewarning will be the driest of the bunch, um, but there's a couple of administrative things to hit up front that will make your life easier going forward. So we're going to look at those specifically, um, one authentication trap that's easy to fall into, setting version 11 up. Then we'll look at the new, it's being advertised as like taking stems to the next level. It's really just a batch processor in your audio export engine, but it's very cool. It saves, it can save a lot of time. So we'll look at that. And then in chapter two, I want to look at the new dynamics tools. Chapter three, we'll get into the multiband tools. Um, four, we'll look at all the little environment tweaks, mostly in the key editor. Um, and then the, the fifth and final chapter is going to be the spectral editing stuff. And that's where you get into the really, some of this just amazing stuff you can do now in 11 with like erasing vocals from a finished mix and stuff. And I have this theory that Steinberg is working towards eventually just releasing one monster product called like, the Unity, I suppose. <laughs> because every iteration of Cubase, it's like they send ninjas over into the Nuendo side of the building and they come back with stuff. So they brought back all the multiband stuff. And then they sent other ninjas over to the WaveLab side of the building and, and they came back with the spectral editing tools from WaveLab. So while these features are, they are new to Cubase, most of what we're looking at here is mature technology. It's been around in these other applications for quite some time, which is good because it's, it works well. It's not buggy and so forth. They've just kind of optimized it for Cubase and slid it into the sides here. So um, before we get into that, I want to touch on one thing that we ran into um, setting up version 11 um, in 30 seconds or less. Version 9.5, I think they introduced the download manager as like a, hey, here, you can use this if you want to. It makes it easier to manage your products. As of version 11, the download manager is uh, mandatory. And the trap that we ran into is when you first download the application and install it and launch it the first time, it comes up and says, hey, I don't have a license for this. Would you like to begin the authentication process? Well, yes, I would. And when you say yes, it brings up the old e-licensor. And that had a place for a 16-digit code. The new codes are 10 digits. And we went in circles for like a day and a half on this. And even sent a, a help ticket into Steinberg, like, this isn't working. And hey, I swear to God, they wrote back and said, what are you, new? <laughs> Got to use the download assistant. Um, so your authentication code, license code, and so forth uh, has to be in, typed into the download manager. It's, it's odd to me that they still, the default is to call up the e-licensor, which won't work. It offers it to you on a plate. And so, anyway, so if you're in that loop or you know somebody in that loop, that's the answer. You've got to put the code into the download manager. But I also want to show you... Um, some some stuff that we captured during setup that's relevant to this. Uh, so here you've got the download manager, and you can see the uh, you can the one of the handy things is you can go down and pick just which modules you want installed. So like if you if you don't use Pad Shop, you don't have to install Pad Shop. It's a little more a la carte, which is handy. But every once in a while, you'll get this happen where it comes up and says, for some unknown reason, we can't download and install. I guess these are downloaded, but they it wouldn't install this product. And the way out of this is to come over and drop down the, uh, pull down this menu and go to the file location itself, double click the offending element there, and you can see it begins the classic um, install and uh, the, the process back from the e-licensor days. So you can still tunnel in and uh, break the log jam this way. So uh, with all that being said, I want to show you the, uh, the new export functionality here, which is really Pretty cool. Uh, if we go to File, Export Audio Mix Down, initially nothing looks very different here. It's a little darker presentation. But down at the bottom is an Export Queue. Let's twirl that open. And actually, I'm going to remove everything from there. And what this uh, is going to allow us to do is sort of set up a whole bunch of mixing functions, export functions at one time, and then hit Go and walk away. And you do need to walk away because this takes rather a long time to process, but it saves you a lot of clicking. So, excuse me, let's say we're at the end of a session, end of the day. A real typical request is, cool, can I get an MP3 version of this that's small enough to email to everybody? And then I, I'd also like a high resolution to go home and listen to on my stereo. 
And could you send me the, the stems, you know, just the drums, bass, and guitars so I can play with it in my own DAW, and so on. And everything I just uh, spelled out there is probably, what, half a dozen, ten different mixing functions to sit there and generate all those. Then you got to find some place to put them and so forth. And uh, this allows you to just set that all up and hit go. So let's, let's walk through that really quickly. Uh, we're in the single mode here. I've got the stereo out selected. Um, we're going to do this as an MP3, and we're going to be really clever and call this MP3 version. And when you look at the preview here, this is the this is where that naming engine becomes handy. So let me open that just to review. This has been here for a while, but the naming scheme, you can drag these different uh, attributes down and, and get your exported file named exactly the way you want it to. And in this case, the only attribute I've pulled down is name, and that's why... It took the MP3 version and put it right there. And I'm just going to add this to my queue. So the first thing it's going to do is create that. Now all I have to do is come up here and change the file type from uh, MP3 to WAV. This would be for the producer's high-res version. And we'll call this one high-res high version. It's not clever like that. And then we'll add that to the queue. And then for the, uh, for the stems, I'm actually going to close this window altogether. And let's say, um, I don't know, we'll just spin open the drums. Say he just wants to play with drums, or she just wants to play with drums. So we'll just pick a handful of drum tracks in the actual project window over in the inspector. And now when we go back to the uh, file export, audio mix down, we select multiple channels and then hit this link button, and boom, it's automatically pulled everything we had highlighted in the project in here for export. And then we uh, add that to the queue, and you can see this one now is twirled open and it's got all those different uh, files added to that batch, seven of them. Now, um, let's go back. I want to show you one thing on the, the one hassle about this, the one feature that would have been really nice is it doesn't dump each of those into its own folder. They're all going to be in one big mix down folder. But before we leave the naming conventions, I just want to point something out here. Um, you see, this is defaulted to naming it the channel name the channel number and this counter. Um, the counter is just an arbitrary, the first one is zeros and the second one is 01, 02, 03, you know, whatever's in your batch. This field resets um, with each batch. So if you had like a whole bunch of drum files you're exporting, then a whole bunch of keyboard files you're exporting, you select counter. When you get to the finished bunch of stuff, you're going to see file one, two, three, four, five for the drums and then one, two, three, four, five again for the keyboard. It's more confusing than it's worth. So I would recommend um, pulling those out. So we'll just, just as a pro tip for on down the road. Now that this is all done, uh, we hit start queue export. And on the Steinberg site, they they talk about this four different times they've mentioned, and then you can just go get a cup of coffee and you really should maybe a beer because this does take rather a long time. So we're going to pause this here and then, um, let this run for a couple of minutes. I'll get a cup of coffee and then we'll finish this up. Okay, so it's getting close to finished here. And uh, I wanna show you one other uh, kind of funky aspect of these progress bars when it finishes up here. And I will say, if you're trying to interact with this window while the export is going on, there's a lot of latency. That may just be a function of our system more than anything, but um, let it burn through these last seven. Okay, there we go. So uh, it kind of went by fast, but the, the green check mark to indicate file export complete uh, happens at the file level, not the folder level. So if you have a whole bunch of these, like you've got nine folders full of tracks that are exporting, you have to have the folder open to see the progress bar. You won't get a green check mark. If you've got it, if you've got the folder closed up, you won't see the done check over here. So um, just kind of an annoyance. After the export is complete, we go to the project folder, and you'll notice there's a new player here, and that is this uh, mixdown folder that is created, which is actually really handy because you've got a place associated with your project that, that everything goes. Uh, and of course, you can set the export default anywhere you want if you've got glyph systems or some sort of external structure that you don't have to use this, obviously. But um, if we take a look at what's in here, now you can see in one export operation, or one click, we have our MP3 version, our high-res version, and then I actually had to back up and re-export, and so I did two different batches here, three percussive items and then three wubs, 
whatever a wub is. And I threw that counter on the end just to show you what I'm talking about. In the, the batch for the percussive stuff, it, the counter went 0, 1, 2, and then it did 0, 1, 2 again for the wubs. Um, so that's in this environment, that's not a terribly useful way to segregate them. And I guess the other thing, like I said, that when you do a multiple batch like that, obviously each exported function has its own path in life. It would be handy if these were um, e each one pocketed in their own folder to me. But this one it wouldn't be too bad to manage. But if you had this with like 40 tracks, you'd have to go through and pick you know, which ones go to who and all that stuff. But I have a feeling in 10.5, they'll probably add that capability. So with that in mind, um, we will jump back in in the next chapter and look at the uh, new set of Dynamics tools. Each back in a second.